Hey internet, what's up? Your buddy Wu here and this is our final entry in my spooky diary regarding the first Silent Hill game. It was a fun ride so far. I am enjoying doing this. And today we're gonna talk a little bit about the characters and the story of Silent Hill. And that was my phone. Great. I'm gonna keep that in. Now before I'm gonna start describing the characters or talk about the characters a little bit, I have to get something out of the way. Yes, I know, I said in the last video that you are able to see one of the last cutscenes in the intro. That's not entirely true. That's not really true. It's a cutscene you see a little bit changed in the end of the game that's also in the intro. Sorry about that. I couldn't be bothered editing it out in the last episode. Oops. So, without further ado, is it redo or adu? I don't know. Let's just go ahead and talk about the characters in Silent Hill. Of course, we're gonna start with our main protagonist, Harry Mason. As you may remember from our very first video, he's on vacation with his daughter Cheryl, he likes to do that, doing late vacation, and he's going to Silent Hill. As they are coming closer to Silent Hill, a cop is speeding by his jeep, and a mysterious figure walks right in front of Harry's jeep. They have an accident, and as Harry wakes up, his daughter Cheryl is gone. That's how he ends up in Spooky World. Harry is a writer. I learned that one from a booklet. They, they don't really mention it in the game. Uh, they don't really have to. I think. It's not important what he does. If he's a plumber or an exterminator or a writer. It doesn't really matter. And as the main character, he's the character you will fall the most in the game. Well, he's the only character you take control of. I think Konami intended you to identify with him. But he seems pretty chill about the whole situation, you know? About being attacked by monsters, that his daughter is gone. Uh, I get it. He wants to get his daughter back, but it's still weird that he's not one bit scared. That's pretty weird. It does change a little bit during the course of the game. There's a part where Harry starts to mistrust himself. He's not quite sure if everything he sees is really happening. But this is almost spoiler territory, so we're gonna talk about it later. Let's move on to the second most important character in the whole game. Uh, everything is revolving around, actually, and that's Cheryl Mason, Harry's seven-year-old daughter. As I mentioned, she went missing after the car crash. And throughout the game, she leaves little clues for Harry. Uh, she writes them in crayon on paper and basically tells him where to go first to kick or let the plot click in and that's all i can say about her without spoiling the story sorry next up is civil bennett the police woman from brahms the neighboring town of silent hill she's the secondary main character so to speak you can see her in the opening she's the cop on a motorcycle and she's the one helping harry after he gets attacked in the beginning of the game by those child demons and brings him to the cafe uh, they have a little chat, he's talking about his daughter, she tells him that all the roads are blocked, there's no getting out of Silent Hill, the phones aren't working, the radios aren't working, and she gives him a gun. Now, I this, this still bugs me. If you are a police officer, if you are in law enforcement, and there's a confused guy that had an accident, I don't think he's talking about the accident, that he was in an accident, it just says he's a tourist, but if there's a weird acting guy talking about a little girl that's his daughter and he's looking for her, and there are monsters out there, I don't know why I'm doing air quotes, you can see it. Would you give that dude a gun? Would you trust him with a firearm? I wouldn't. I would handcuff that dude, let him stay there, and come back to get him once I got help. But that's maybe too much logic for a horror game. Yeah, I think it is. She agrees to help Harry and they don't really go on on the search together, but they work together to find Cheryl. Next up is Lisa Garland, a nurse working at the Arkhamilla Hospital in Silent Hill. She gives Harry a little bit of information. She's a very quiet character, a very scared character, so to say. Uh, at one point in the story, she begs Harry to stay with her, she doesn't want to be alone because she's scared in the hospital. But she doesn't want to leave the place with Harry. He offers her that she can come with him, 
that he will protect her, but she stays there. Uh, for whatever reason. The game doesn't really explain why she has to be there. Maybe it did, and I'm just a stupid. But she's scared about the whole situation. Harry offers her his help, and she just says no. That's really weird. Uh, there's not much going on between the two. Not much interaction besides uh, some like, information exchange. So it's not really worth talking about her, to be honest. Next up is a more important character, in my opinion. That's Dr. Michael Kaufman. I'm not quite sure if he's really a doctor. Yeah. Uh, you have meet him for the first time in the hospital too. And instead of uh, talking to Harry, he just shoots at him. He straight shoots at him. Well, it's because uh, Kaufman just uh, killed an enemy, a monster, and maybe thinks Harry is one of those creatures. And he doesn't talk much. He's really quiet, he only asks if Harry knows a way out, if he found something interesting in Silent Hill. That's a pretty good description of his character. He's a dick. He's an asshole. But how would you react in this situation? Imagine there's an apocalypse going on out there, you want to survive, and you would do pretty much anything to do so, and you may act like a dick. But there's one part of the game where Harry saves him from being killed, he still is an asshole to him. Yeah, that's his whole character, that's Kaufman. A Kaufman? Kaufman? I think it's pretty weird since Kaufman is the German word for businessman. And he does look more like a businessman than a doctor. Maybe they wanted him to do, or wanted him to be like a businessman character, you know, the soulless, only results matter guys. Yeah, just a little side note, something that caught my attention when I was playing. And we almost introduced all the characters. Let's talk about Dahlia Gillespie. She's a mysterious middle-aged woman Harry meets in a church. And she acts like the enigmatic uh, supporting character in the game. She leads Harry on on his search for his daughter. She gives him little clues and items to use later on. And tells Harry that he's the only one that's able to chase away the darkness of Silent Hill. She's kinda shady. You don't know what her motivation is, or what her motivations are. Why she's helping you. Is she really helping you? I guess you have to play the game to find out. Or wait until the end of the video to really find out. And last but not least, maybe the most important character besides Harry and Cheryl, and that sounds kinda spoilery, is Alessa. Uh, Lessa is the mysterious teenage teenager that walked in front of Harry's car in the beginning and caused the accident. He can see her all out through Silent Hill in little glimpses like visions, but he isn't really able to talk to her. And there's one thing peculiar about her, uh, even though she's older than Cheryl, she looks a lot like her. Uh, that's one of the mysteries revolving her character. Uh, maybe it's going to be soft in the story. Alright you beautiful people, I'm going to talk about the story of the game, the end story, the ending of the game. So spoiler warning, if you don't want to be spoiled, jump to this time code or click uh, the timestamp in the description down below if you want to remain spoil free. Now we're gonna talk about the important stuff, yeah. So I'm gonna give you some seconds to close the video or jump to the time code. Okay. Are those people gone? Great. So before I'm gonna talk about how the story really plays out, I'm gonna give you a little theory or the theories I came up while playing the game. While playing Silent Hill, there are implications that Harry didn't survive the crash. He often says that he feels like he's in a dream. He even says, says, says directly or thinks to himself that maybe he is in the hospital right now, being unconscious, dreaming all this horrible stuff up. And uh, one theory I had while playing the game was that Harry actually died and went to hell. That he didn't survive the car crash. And there's one piece of evidence, evidence may be uh, too strong of a word, but I can't think of another one. To see whether this could be true, since you can see Sybil driving by his car, you can see that Sybil crash crashed. You can see her motorcycle being turned over on the street. And she's in Silent Hill too. Maybe... He's just imagining all this stuff while dying, or he died, 
and it's a really twisted version of hell he's going through right now. But maybe there's also something supernatural going on. Maybe there's really something supernatural going on in Silent Hill. And to answer the question or answer this theory, we're gonna talk about what really happened. First of all, I'm gonna give you a little background to Silent Hill itself, to the town Silent Hill, because you need to know that to understand what is going on. In the beginning, when Silent Hill was founded, it was a quiet little town. The people of Silent Hill were interested in these occult rites. They uh, weren't really devil worshippers. Some would say they are satanic, but they aren't. They uh, are worshipping an ancient god. It's not really clear what or who that god is. But it's hinted throughout the game that it's like a fertility demon. Yeah. And these people used a plant called White Claudia that induces hallucinations. And later on, people went to Silent Hill to create a drug called PVT. That's a little uh, side mission or something you learn from the side mission in the game. They used Silent Hill to uh, racketeer drugs to and sell to tourists that came to Silent Hill. Throughout the time, more and more people moved away from Silent Hill because all these strange things going on, or they did know that something was fishy and they didn't want to live there. And everyone who was trying to do something against those drugs died mysteriously. There was a DA agent that died, an anti-drug mayor died in an accident, and people start to suspect that something really, really wrong is going on. So now that you know that there are some occult and uh, illegal things going on in Silent Hill, it's important to know that Alessa, the mysterious girl you see in the beginning, is Dahlia's daughter. And Alessa is supposed to possess uh, magical powers. She has, uh, she's very powerful regarding magic. It's revealed that Kaufman and Dahlia and a bunch of other cult members tried to do a ritual with Alessa to summon the god. This is something like it's in her womb. That's pretty weird or disgusting since Alessa is what, seven years old at the time? That's pretty weird. And they want to sacrifice her to gain power. Or well, let's say they have to sacrifice her to summon their god. And during the ritual something goes wrong. A fire breaks out in the Gillespie house. And it said that Alessa died. But she didn't really die. What happened is that she split up her soul. I mean, I'm thinking the good and the bad part. And the good part escaped and manifested itself as a baby. And that baby is Cheryl. Yeah. Uh, it's also revealed that Harry isn't Cheryl's biological father. He and his uh, dead wife, now dead wife, she wasn't dead at that point, that would be weird, found Cheryl on the side of the road, decided t to take her in, to take care of her. What's also pretty weird, uh, are Child Protective Service so lash in the US? Can you just pick up a baby from the side of the road and say it's your daughter? That's pretty weird. But nevertheless, as you are coming back, you and Cheryl, or Harry and Cheryl, are coming back to Silent Hill. She, Alessa, and Cheryl rejoin, diffuse back together again. So the Alessa you see in Silent Hill, the teenage girl that's helping you, is Cheryl. That's like the big twist of the game. Alessa has been Cheryl all along. There are two Alessas now. The one that has actually been Cheryl and turned into the teenage woman, and the Alessa that survived the burning or survived the ritual and is now covered up in bandages and looks really, really gross. And that also somehow explains why a lot of stuff is happening in the hospital because Alessa was kept there in the basement until the time came that they can finish the ritual. Now, as all of this is coming to an end, the other world is taking over Silent Hill more and more. And there is actually a part where you have to fight Sybil in an amusement park, in a creepy amusement park, and I already mentioned that boss fight. I love that fight. It's amazing. If I could do it again, I would do it again. It's so much fun. But the important part about that boss fight is, is that it decides which ending you get in Silent Hill. There are five different endings. I'm first gonna talk about the good plus ending, the one I got while playing the game, and later on talk a little bit about the other endings so you have an understanding what's happening. So if you decide to save uh, Sybil in the amusement park, you do so by throwing a weird liquid at her. 
That liquid is made out of, let me check my notes, Aglaophotis. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, but who cares. And that liquid is like an instant exorcism spell. It expels demons instantly. It's pretty much the only thing you can use to get rid of a demon inside someone else's body. So you decided to help Sybil. There's another side quest where you help, not really help, you find another vial of uh, Espala blah 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 that gets taken away by Kaufman. And the story comes down to Dahlia capturing a lesser, or shovel, however you want to call her, and trying to perform the ritual again. Harry gets stuck in a place called Nowhere. It's like a compilation of all the locations you have been. It's really like hell. I think this place really is hell. You somehow ended up in hell. And Dahlia is trying to awake this weird demon. The great demon I talked about earlier. The god. Uh, so, Alessa, or Cheryl, whoever I want to call her, fuses back together with the real Alessa and turns into the incubator. The incubator is like an angel-like thing, a glowing thing. I can show a photo. And before anything else happens, Kaufman suddenly shows up with the vial of Esper Langa Ding Dong, throws it at the incubator and frees the real demon, the Incubus. Now this guy looks a lot like Baphomet, don't know if you are familiar with Baphomet, he's like a Templar symbol, who is associated with the Templar or satanic rites, satanic cults. He's a, a demon or an angel with horns and wings and breasts for whatever reason. Uh, but he's actually seen as a fertility god or a symbol of fertility in old religions, so I think that's pretty fitting since the people of Silent Hill have been worshipping a fertility god. Before this video goes on for too long, I'm uh, gonna tell you what happens next. Harry succeeds in defeating the Incubus. Dahlia gets killed by the demon. Uh, Alessa turns back to normal into the Incubus. She gives Harry a baby, a little baby, and helps him and Sybil escape Silent Hill. And that's where the game ends. Yeah, you saved the day, you somehow survived. Cheryl slash Alessa is dead, or maybe reincarnated into that little baby. It's pretty weird. And that's considered the good ending plus. Yeah. So, how does this differ from the other endings? Now, let's say you didn't save Sybil, but you gave Kaufman the vial of Aspalaga Ding Dong. He will also show up, free the Incubus, you kill the Incubus, uh, Alessa hands you the baby and Harry escapes from Silent Hill alone. If you didn't do any of this stuff, if you didn't give Kaufman the vial, he won't show up at the ending, and Alessa will only turn into the Incubus, the fight is pretty much the same. She will die, she says something like, thank you daddy, goodbye, to make you sad, I guess. And Harry escapes with the baby. Uh, hang on, no, no. To do so, you have to save Sybil too. Yeah, you have to save Sybil to get that ending. Sorry, excuse me. I hope that this isn't too complicated. If you do the same without saving Sybil, Harry won't get the baby. He will be stuck down in the uh, in the Hell Dimension, and it's revealed that he actually died in the car crash. Yes, I knew it. And he's in Hell. And those are the four endings of Silent Hill. But hang on, didn't I say there was a fifth one? Yeah, there is a fifth ending. You can only achieve that one in Fear Next mode. That's like New Game Plus. You can play through the game again. If you start a new Fear Plus, there is an item you can pick up in the beginning of the game. I think it's called the Stone of Calling or something like that. Yeah, maybe I can edit the name in via text. You continue on the game as normal until you come to the lighthouse part of the game. And upon using the stone on the lighthouse, UFOs are coming out from the sky. They kidnap Harry and presumably do butt stuff to him. And that's the end of the game. Well, at least you get an awesome blast of forgetting that ending. And that's pretty much it regarding Silent Hill and its ending. I hope it wasn't too complicated. I should really work on my narrating skills. And I guess this is the part where all the people that want to remain spoiler free are joining us back. I want to talk a little bit more about the game, what I thought about it. Uh, first off is the difficulty. 
the first half of the game is not really difficult, not really easy. It's a normal horror game, but as soon as the other world takes over most parts of Silent Hill, it gets hard as balls. Believe me, it gets hard as balls. The enemies are stronger, the bosses are stronger, healing items are more rare, and that was only on normal mode. I haven't tackled hard mode yet, but I'm maybe gonna do that too. That's regarding the difficulty. How long did it take to complete Silent Hill? Well, it took me 6 hours. It took me 6 hours and 27 seconds. It's a short game. Yeah, 6 hours is kind of short. But I don't think back in the day that was regarded as short. Games are getting more and more uh, bigger nowadays. Yeah. So, my thoughts on the game. I don't really like point systems, you know, since I have a hard time deciding what is an 8 out of a 10, what is a 7 out of a 10. So I'm just gonna give you a small recollection of my thoughts. Like I said, the music... The music? <laughs> the music may be the best part of the game for me. Uh, the combat works fine, it can be challenging without coming off as annoying. Uh, but sometimes it seems it's just there to stop you. The puzzles are good in the way they are. Not too much. I would have liked there to be more of them, but it kind of everything. Yes, there are huge amounts of bloods and yucky things in the game, but I still like how it focuses more on the psychological sides of horror. As Harry starting to question his own sanity, you start to do the same. You start to think, hey, maybe this guy is crazy. Maybe he's just fucked up and twisted and imagining all this. Another thing that I didn't really agree with was the twist at the end. That's I want to remain spoiler free, but there's a twist at the end. I saw it coming from a mile away, maybe because I already played some horror games, watched horror movies, and know there has to be some twist at the end. Uh, but I guess back in the 1990s, it was something new and cool thing to do. It still works, but it was kind of obvious. Now, if you wondered where the Silent Hill franchise took off, or wonder where games like Evil Within got the inspiration from? Check out Silent Hill, I think you will like it. I just liked it. And those are my closing words for my final entry on Silent Hill in my spooky diary. That was a lot of fun guys. I enjoyed doing this, maybe I gonna work with a script next time. <laughs> a lot of ands and ahs in these recordings. That comes off kinda shitty, don't you think? But nevertheless, thank you guys so much for listening. I couldn't say watching since you're mostly listening to me. If you enjoyed this, let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. If you feel especially generous, you may consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you in the next diary entry where we will talk about Silent Hill 2. Yes, we're gonna play all of them. We're gonna play all the games! That was a good ending. <laughs>